What happens when you mix the Papa Louie games with Dead Cells? You get Moonlighter. Hello everyone, it is I, Joker, bringing you a first rate review on the roguelite game Moonlighter. Before I actually start talking about this game, I need to clarify that I will not be including anything about the DLC as I haven't gotten around to playing it. So the basic premise of Moonlighter is that you play as a young merchant as he adventures through mysterious dungeons slaying everything that comes his way. This may seem like a basic storyline for a roguelite, but as you traverse the different dungeons, you find tons of notes that start feeding you with the hidden game lore. Yes, you heard me right. Lore. So when you first start your save file, you're first treated with an opening cutscene explaining a little about the dungeons themselves and how a small village rose and fell due to the presence of these dungeons. We are then introduced to our white haired protagonist, Will, who I thought was an old man. What? Don't ask why. It's cause like in the front cover of the game you see him in the back so uh, I'll- Our little boy Will here wants to unlock the door to the final dungeon while also running the oldest store in his town, the Moonlighter. <laughs> He said it! He said it! As you progress further into the dungeons and your merchant life, you meet a cast of characters including some villagers, store owners, a banker, and a dead crazy dude. Now for the gameplay, all I can say is that's good. Moving on. Ah, uh, just kidding. But truly, this game has some fun gameplay, as it's able to balance the shop owning life with dungeon crawling. The loop of needing to go into dungeons to collect items so you can sell them, and then buying new equipment to go into harder dungeons had me seriously hooked. Now I did play this game during my final exams, so it was quite hard for me not to put this game down. I finished on the final day of the final exams, which was nice. Start of vacation? There are 5 dungeons in total, each containing a bunch of enemies to defeat. Each door has been opened before your arrival, except the 5th door which requires the use of keys obtained by defeating the big baddies at the end of the first 4 dungeons. All dungeons have their own theme to them which you'll understand why once you finish the game. When going through a dungeon, you might see a little spark in the depths. If you do, please jump down. <laughs> in the depths, you might find random items, but make sure, if you see a pedestal with an item, take it and replace it, so you don't meet your demise. You could also meet your demise if you take too long, so please don't take too long. Gold in this game plays a huge part, since it's basically the thing that helps you upgrade your equipment. Wealth, fame, Power. Will, the king of dungeons, attain this and everything the dungeon- As I've stated before, there are tons of enemies in this game. And I mean tons. They all have their own drops, which you can sell for gold in your store. Whenever you want to sell an item, you are given the power to sell it at any price you want. But hold your horses. If you sell an item and it's way overpriced, then your customers won't buy it and an angry reaction would appear above them. There are four different reactions, with each depending on how you price an item. A reaction could positively or negatively impact the popularity of an item, or won't be affected at all. Now, using your gold in this game plays a big role. You gain your gold by selling the items you've gathered. Once you have your gold, you can then use it to buy from your fellow shop owners, use it to upgrade your town and store, or you could give it to Edward, the monopoly looking fella who hasn't done anything in my game and keeps saying come back to me after X number of days. I freaking wasted 70 pieces of gold just to have him in my village, and he does nothing. Bro just sits there in the park, looking at his stupid watch. Since we were talking about spending money, why don't we talk about the stores? There are 5 different stores you can have in your game. The shops are, Hawker, run by Alan the Adventurer, Le Retailer, run by Julian the Merchant, The Wooden Hat, run by Eris the Witch, Vulcan's Forge, run by Andre the Blacksmith, and finally, the boring banker. If you decided to use your money in your shop, there are many upgrades you can buy. Some might increase the profit of your sales, while others might increase the quality of life. One of the upgrades you need to definitely get is definitely the cash register, as it freaking increases your profit. Do you know how much that helps? It does more than the banker. So don't spend 70,000 pieces of gold like I did, just invest in a cash register instead. As you go around being the tremendous dungeon bosses, you are able to upgrade the store's capacity. When you first start off the game, you are given a small store. This store can sell 4 items at a time and has one personal chest. But every time you beat a boss, you are given the opportunity to upgrade the store more and more. Now for the combat. Before you start the game, you are given the choice of difficulty. You got normal, hard, and very hard. The game recommends hard as it's supposed to be the default difficulty, and normal being easy and very hard being hard. Look, the combat in this game isn't something complex. You got five different buttons. Wait a second, I just noticed this. Why does this game have so many fives? Like seriously, like you have like 
five different dungeons, five different shops, five different buttons. And the next thing is gonna be like, oh, we got five different hairstyles. Each button in this game has a use to it. The main attack button is the one you'll be spamming the most when you don't know what you're doing, like I did when I was fighting the first boss. The second attack can be charged up, resulting in you performing a strong attack. Now this strong attack is good, but the thing is if you don't do it at a perfect moment, you could get killed and lose your run. You also do have a roll button and a use potion button. You do as well have a button that can change your primary weapon between the two weapons you're carrying. Wait, did I mention there are five different weapons you can craft? If there's another five of something, that's it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this video. In the game, there are five basic weapons, each having their own pros and cons. The five weapons are the sword and shield, the spear, the bow, the gloves, and finally, the big sword. Nah, this can't be right. What in the world is a big sword? Isn't this supposed to be a claymore? <clears throat> so as we were saying, there are five different weapons. Each weapon has two upgrade paths. One path only focuses on power, while the other path adds enchantments onto the weapon. There are four different enchantments. Ugh. Thank god. Each dungeon has its own enchantment. You got a stun enchantment, a fire enchantment, a poison enchantment, and lastly, an electric enchantment. Now while you're out exploring the dungeons, you may come across an egg. Yeah, mm-hmm, I think you know where this is going. You can have little pet versions of the monsters that you've been slaying and selling their body parts for coffee. <laughs> All pets have their own thing they do. Some fight with you, while others give you buffs. The reason I only focused on the path that increases your power is because the slime pets in this game Ground you the enchantments on your weapons. There are four different types of slimes, each one gives you a different enchantment on your weapon. Isn't that cool? Something I haven't talked about that much in the game, which is a core part of the game, is the boss fights. Well, all I can say is they're pretty wicked, but I did get spoiled. So I might as well spoil it for you. Get ready. It's gonna pop up on the screen right now. Right now. Ah, I get pranked. Like I would spoil something for anyone, but I usually do by accident. I know, I'm that type of person. But, but it's by accident, you know what I mean? Why do people get so mad? <gasps> if we're talking about soundtrack, this game's soundtrack fits the overall vibe. Whether you're outside walking in the village or in the depths of the dungeons, you get the sensation. As if you were isekai into another world. Now since we've talked about something that's pretty bad, which is isekais, we're gonna be talking about the things that I disliked about this game. One of the main things that annoyed me during this game was the rolling mechanic. As you go through the dungeon, there are some rooms that have magma or poison on the ground. To avoid it, you need to roll over the space it occupies. But for some reason, even though I rolled, I still end up being damaged by the thing. I either get burned or rolled. Uh. No, I, I mean poison, not rolled. This, this isn't a pizzeria. Now for my final thoughts. Although I rage during this game a lot, had some fun, but the main important thing was running my shop like the man I am. I'm Joker, signing out.